Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that could be, oh, well, that's my, my washing machine. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> so you're in Germany right now, Steph. I mean, no, uh, no, you're no, 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 I live in England. Why are you, you in England? Yeah, I just moved. Like, Well, I lived in England anyway, but I just moved to a new flat, and we've been doing laundry, and we didn't know. The, it's a really old washing machine, and it essentially like shakes the entire flat. It sounds like an old lady bashing clothes against rocks, like the, like the good old days. Uh, no, it's, not, it's not that entertaining. No. Let's bring everyone up to date on Stephanie because they don't know. This is Caffeine Jedi. Caffeine yes. Jedi. One of the one of the uh, first or second generation vloggers, J vloggers, left Japan about a year ago now. Yeah, it's been a little more than a year now, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us your history. This is kind of interesting story, just leaving Japan. Um, let's see. Uh, from Miami, so um, I did the whole A Kaiwa thing first. I started doing that. But that sucks, monkey balls. And um, it depends the AKO you work for, I guess, right? Like, because I went one with like a really shitty, horrible one that you know. Didn't you the say teachers you don't like even three? last a year. You worked for like three I, different ones. I no, I worked for an AKO and two international schools. Ah, and they all screwed you. And they all did pretty much. I I like I, I stand by, I stand by that like I I will I will never trust. You can never really trust the company that you work for usually. Like as a teacher, because you know you're so replaceable, so they don't really give a crap. So Especially when you leave. Tell us your, tell us about your first one. Okay, so the first place I worked for, um, it's actually a much smaller uh, Ekaiwa, like comparatively. Um, it's based mostly in Yamanashi. It was called Unitas. Yamanashi? You were in Yamanashi? I was in Yamanashi. That was first place. Wow. In Fiji. What's, what's, what's up in Yamanashi? What do they got over there? Oh, my God. Well, one, I used to live in a place called Fujiyoshida, which is, like, by mm -hmm. Kawaguchiko. It's, like, on, like, really yeah. close. Like, you could basically walk to Mount Fuji if you really wanted to. I had a flatmate, and that's, like, the guy who lived next door, and that's exactly what he did. That's someone I used to work for. Mm. Everybody not work for, work with. And he actually climbed up from our flat to, to, to like, top of Mount Fuji. Like, he actually did that. Well, by the way, if all those people have these dreams of climbing Mount Fuji, don't. It's a really, really dumb That's idea. Why I put it off well, didn't you, well, didn't you ever hear the, the Japanese proverb that uh, yeah. a wise man will climb Mount Fuji at least once, but a fool will do it twice? Exactly. I did it, too. I did it, too. It's... Uh, I, I, it was an experience, yeah, but you like you'll never do it again. It's oh like, wow, well, I did it. All you do is it off the bucket list. You suffer you and suffer and suffer and suffer, and then it's over. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, oh, it's not so much suffering; it's just boring. You're just staring at someone's ass on the line as you walk. I up. wish well, if, if, I, if only I had an ass to stare at the entire time. No, yeah. I did. I did it the backward. You know, I didn't do it the traditional way. I started in midday and I made it up to the. Well, because, you know, you're supposed to do it at night and make it up to by sunrise. Oh, yeah. I, 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 did the same. I did it during the day, yeah. I, oh, I, I did didn't do night. that. I did it at, uh, I started around 11, and I made it to the top around 7 p.m. was setting, which was really nice. Like, you saw the sunset. That's nice. Man, I, 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 was, um, a, I was with a company soccer team. We ran up the mountain in three hours and down in one. Wow. That is fast. Had the worst migraine of my life when we got down. <laughs> it was like, but there was also a storm at the top, so we couldn't see anything, and we oh, had a sandstorm. And oh wow! I was like hypothermic, drunk, and hungover, and run the mountain <laughs> in a race with, with with my friends. And I nearly died that night when I lay down. I was just like, I don't know. I think I got the altitude sickness plus yeah. the hangover plus that was crazy. Yeah, I remember I made it home, like, I made it to, to the, the fifth station where you get off at, you know, take the, I took a taxi home from where I was, which cost, like, um, wow. Ichiman. Wow. But, it, but the guy got us off that mountain in, like, from my, from the mountain, from fifth station to, like, our apartment was, like, seven minutes. This guy was wow. hauling ass, like. And it cost you Ichiman? And, and it was Ichiman. Yeah, it was a flat fare. And, um. But wow. I, I, I just remember he was swirling down, and I was like, I felt like I was gonna puke. I was like, I, I just come down, so I was like, Pretty I'm gonna bark. I think you're entitled to puke. Yeah, yeah, but then I was saying that, yeah, exactly. But then I the told class. my, I was with my my friend who was, you know, this crazy hippie guy, but he was really cool. But I go to him, how do I tell this guy 
I need to throw up because neither of us knew how to say it in Japanese. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I gotta hold out. And I'm like, hey, you gotta, you gotta keep my mind off of the fucking road because if I look, I'm gonna just puke in this car, and I don't want it to have that ha on me. <laughs> so. The good thing about vomiting is it's one of those situations where actually physical sign language really works. It gets a message across. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I used to go get a massage, uh, like a regular, not the hooker massages. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, at, wow. at this, uh, hey, they have. You mean the John John Travolta type massage? The the regular yeah. massage. No, but no, I used to go. No happy ending. No happy ending. Just a regular <laughs> lady. But the funny thing was, usually when I go to get a massage, it's fine. Like, I don't really need to speak Japanese. You know, I just point what I want, they do it. It's no problem. But there was once I that's what where most they, people do. Yeah, but there was once where there was a blind girl. They would give me this blind girl. And I was oh, like, really? oh, fuck, yeah. But <laughs> she was fun. She was a great masseuse and stuff. But I felt really bad because how the fuck am I communicating now? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Sound, uh, the sound is terrible? Is it sound bad? Someone says it sounds bad. I don't know. Well, I, I hear I you think guys. The experience sounds terrible, possibly. Mm. It's not that there's not the actual sound quality. I, remember, this is going back 30 seconds to comments. So yeah. right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It could have been the uh, washing machine. Mm. So, wait a minute. One of the original reasons I wanted to get Stephanie on was to. Uh, to tell you about, let her share her crappy story. <laughs> should I, should yeah, I, kind I, of crappy stories? I don't believe well, okay. it. No. Oh, okay. This rare uh, sunshine can possibly have one new story. <laughs> Please, get off it. Um, well, let's see. What can I tell you about my, my first Eikaiwa experience? That I don't want to talk about that. That's such like dark memories. But I'll tell you how I got how I got screwed by my last school financially by like a, a big amount. Okay. Okay. Um, what happened was, uh, you know, I I was leaving anyway, and the fucked up thing was right before I, I was my contract was right about to finish. It like literally finished, like it was supposed to finish in one week, but then the earthquake happened, like the big tsunami oh, wow. earthquake. Yeah. Oh yeah. That Nobody wanted to come over, right? Yes, and this was really, f and it was extra crazy. The extra crazy thing was they hire all these new teachers, right, to replace us, because I had said I was leaving for a while now. They, they knew. They had already hired everybody's replacement. The replacements had come, and they were actually going to, like, um, a retreat in, in uh, what's it called, in Sendai. They were in Sendai <laughs> at the time, so all the new teachers and two of the managers were in Sendai. And, like, the screwed up thing was that some of the, the teachers who were, you know, the old ones who were leaving to talk to me said, you know, last year when we went, we took a boat trip at the <laughs> coast. And I was Ooh. like, oh, my God. And for, like, three hours, no one could get a hold of anyone. It was, like, really nuts. Um, but, you know, finally, everybody that was with our group was okay. Mm -hmm. They they were in the mountains, so they happened to be all right. Uh, but... All of a sudden, you know, you remember, nobody knew what was going on, and like, right. oh, the, the radiation, you're going to die, it's Chernobyl all over again. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. died at least, like, twice from the radiation, it's crazy, uh, yeah. Apparently, but, like, I had every, like, all these people who I hadn't talked to for, like, you know, like, decades started, like, coming out the woodwork, like, where Bye -bye, are you, are you mom. okay? Oh, my God, yeah, especially my mom. So my mom starts calling me, and I couldn't sleep, she calls me, like, on every hour. Like, there was no sleep for her. I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, and she's like, don't you know what's happening? The Japanese government is lying to you. So, like, I'm getting one side, which is the Japanese government's like, it's cool. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> and then you have the, the Gaijin, you know, news is saying, oh, that's it. It's, it's, it's a Hiroshima part two, you know. <laughs> Mm. And I'm like, what? What am I? And so I, I couldn't even figure out what the truth was. I was, that was like a time. Mm. I think a lot of Gaijin at the time couldn't figure out what exactly was going on. Mm. And so, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was just that time. And mm. so, um, what ended up happening was the the funny thing was I had already moved out of my my apartment. I had moved in with one of my coworkers because they wanted to use my apartment for a new teacher. Right. So I moved out of my apartment. I had sold all my stuff. Like I was like planning like all right, I'm going to stay, I'm going to get my last paycheck, I'm going to make sure everything's closed, all accounts done, no debt, everything's finished, right? So um, in my contract also, they said that um, they they would pay me for half of my health insurance, which was like, I don't know, like, I think it was like, I think like ten, about, 
a little over maybe like 15 mon about was to have on my health insurance. My health insurance was really expensive. And, and yeah. this, was in, this was in Gunma, Ken. Mm. I hated Gunma. That was the only place I, I didn't like that I lived. The, I, I liked Yamanashi, small but interesting. And I liked Nenima, but mm. I hated Gunma, Ken. Yeah. But, but um, what happened was, uh, so the whole earthquake and everything happens, and I can't, I'm going crazy, and like, my mom was like, please, you only have a week left, they already have the new teachers, why don't you just leave, and I'm like, fuck, if I leave, then I have the possibility of them not playing me my bonus and everything, and I'm like, god damn, this is a couple days, and my mom's like, you know, oh, you're going to die, you're not going to be able to find a flight, and so what ended up happening was, I, I, I talked to like, the principal. It, was, it wasn't just me. It was me and several other people who were leaving. Mm -hmm. And there was, oh yeah, there was the rolling blackouts at the time too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we, we didn't even have electricity at the school like, like half the time. We would just kind of teach with the, the windows open because, you know, what can you do? Um, mm -hmm. And this is the international school, right? This is the international school I worked in, yeah. And so I, I go and I talk to them and they go, oh, don't worry about it. Look, if you have to go, you can go, and then we'll, we'll still pay you your bonus. And they ended up closing the school anyway, because they closed the school by the time my contract was finished. So I wouldn't have been able to finish anyway. The school was closed. And I, was sh and I also had all these, like, days off that I hadn't used yet, and they said I could also use those if I needed them. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. That should finish me out for the month. It should have taken me through the end of the month, everything included. I, like, I calculated everything. Mm. And then um, I give them all my receipts for my health insurance because they were going to give me back half of it. So I send that to them, too. I was like, okay, well, here it is. And then, sure enough, I'm waiting for, like, my last paycheck to come. And it takes forever. Like, they just, like, wouldn't send it. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? Like, I'm emailing them. Like, you, you went back to Miami. I had to go back to Miami. I ended up back okay. in Miami, yeah. You didn't tell but, us that, part. You got to, you gotta, come on. All right, right, right. Sorry, tell sorry. Tell the story. Tell I, the story, right? <laughs> as those stories that, like, um... Approximately five days before my contract would have finished, I left to Miami. But that school closed. They couldn't. Okay. They they didn't know what was happening, so I couldn't have taught classes even if they were open. You so know? they, couldn't, I mean, they it, couldn't have given you the money then when you left. Yeah, well, I, that's what like I originally wanted to, but they're like, oh, we have to make sure there's no missing expenses. But I, I even kept si insisting to them. I was like, hey, look, I don't have missing expenses. I closed all my accounts a month ahead of time. I moved in with another person for this reason. But they're like, oh, yeah, but we just really have to double check everything. And, and they were acting so sweet and nice about it. And I felt like I was like, okay, you know, it was against instinct because I knew from two other experiences with other Japanese companies that I shouldn't do this. But I was like, you know what, I mean, come on, it's a time, and that time period was a time where, like, you know, lots of bad stuff, you know, Japan was going through a lot of craziness, everybody was kind of like, every pulled together mentality, and I'm like, all right, that, 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 they wouldn't do anything that horrible right now, I mean, they, like, nobody knew, there was like, you know, they, they were banning the vegetables from Gunma Ken because there was the radiation right. in the air, it was like such right. a crazy, such crazy, and I think we were about, I measured it, and I think we were about 200 kilometers from, from uh, where the pl power plant was, where I was, which was Itasaki, from Fukushima. Um, mm. So I, I, I was really trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. But sure enough, I ended up back in Miami, and all of a sudden, I, I, I did get a last paycheck from them, but it was like a third of what like, I was actually owed. Mm. And then, like, so they never gave me back the health insurance, like my bonus was a lot smaller, and they deducted like the equivalent of two weeks missing of the of the of the month. And I was like, wait, I, I had enough uh, days off to cover the month, right. and you guys closed, and you have paid everybody else who stayed throughout for the entire month, yeah. but they didn't do that for me. And on top of that, um, there, yeah, there was that, and suddenly I also noticed I had a six hundred, uh, uh, yeah, six hundred dollar about uh, six month deduction for paperwork processing. And I was like, what the hell is this? What paperwork processing are you talking about? You had to walk into the post office and fill out a form? You know, Very but, expensive, uh, those teachers, they, 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 they charge like uh, <laughs> <laughs> night workers, I guess. So I ended up like, uh, oh, but there was another person who got screwed worse than me. She, uh, 
she was this Canadian girl, and and at least I got my bonus. Put it this way: what happened to her was when the whole thing happened, the school closed, and then we also closed for spring break. Mm-hmm. You know, for the next school year to start. And um, while that was happening, she decided to take a flight back to Canada. And before she left to Canada, you know, she was going to go visit her family and see how things went. She mm-hmm. told the the manager of the school, "Hey." Um, you, you have to make sure you send me the bonus on time because I'm going to use the bonus to buy my flight back. And, you know, she was going to stay another year. She was not, she was like, she had signed the contract for the next year and everything. Oh, wow. And then apparently, basically, she went back to Canada and they, they said, well, you know what, um, we're not going to pay you your bonus. Like, they didn't even give her a reason or anything for it. They're like, no, no, no. Uh, but if you want to come back, we'll lend you the money and you can pay us back for the flight. What? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she got, like, super pissed about it. And she's like, you know what? Forget it. I'm not even staying. And mm-hmm. and she ended up just not going back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I, I see there are comments here. People are saying it all depends on your attitude as to how, how, how well you're treated and so on. But, you know, that's not necessarily, I mean, especially around the, uh, the quake and, and all, all that kind of stuff, there, there are a lot of schools that kind of, um, I guess there's a bit of a mutual animosity that happened in a lot of places as well, maybe. Some places felt like the teachers ran out on them, and they thought, screw them, we're not going to do anything. But there was certainly a number of schools, and not just schools, but um, businesses as well, where they used it opportunistically to take advantage of uh, paying the people who, who left and not paying what they owed. Um, so, you know, not all, not always, but, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who have perfectly guarded you and were victims for no good reason. That's unfortunate. I mean, it sounds like they were kind of taking advantage of the fact that you were away in Miami and they felt like well, you couldn't do anything about it. Well, I, and I was planning on going back and, like, you know, Finishing, you know, like I was going to go back, and I knew, and like you know, basically they they wanted me to go back, and I would represent the other teachers because it wasn't just me; it was two other teachers that happened to. I mean, mm-hmm. actually, yeah, it's but the the Canadian girl was by far the the worst situation. I mean, I I was planning on leaving, and so was the other girl, but the Canadian girl had just gone basically to visit her family, and then they were like, "Well, you know, we're not going to give you your bonus," but like that didn't make sense at all. There was no reason for it. Yeah. What's the name like, of the school? Can you say it? Uh, yeah, it was Felice International School. Felice. It's a, it doesn't Felice. sound very Felice to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so why don't you, uh, you should add him to a blacklist for sure. I, I was going to, but I like it. I just never got, like, what happened also was that I started studying for the LSAT, which is the, like, you know, if no one, if you're not from, you know, the States, you needed to go to law school. If you're not like, from a civilized country. By the way, uh, congratulations on Happy Cessation Day, you guys. Uh, <laughs> Happy All right. uh, abandoned oh, happy right. colonial traitor day. Well, yeah, well, excuse me, I meant a traitor twice over because I went back to the motherland. Well, that's right. That, that I don't understand <laughs> oh. actually. I must have my sister did that as well. I don't understand that. But you know, happy Fourth of July. So <laughs> you're 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 with a German friend there? Yeah, my German BF, yes. And he, the and reason uh, I didn't go back to Japan is him. This is a this is a That's let's talk about something Japan, a little right? bit happier, a little something very happy. So this is a fascinating story. You had a Japanese boyfriend. Okay, so I had I had several, <laughs> I had a few. Um, All at the same time. <laughs> you were a total slut, weren't you? Come on, be honest. I to- I totally was. Um, no, I would say I had I had two two main guys I dated while I was in Japan. One crazy, one nice, and then. Uh, the German guy I date now. But the crazy one, uh, man, he was all kinds of crazy. I think that, like, a lot of gaijin, this is, I, I would say, not really a warning, but it almost becomes easy to date a Japanese person because they'll help you do a lot of stuff that you can't do. <laughs> and I think that's the original reason I started dating the guy, but then he, he, like, was very possessive and jealous and nuts, and he didn't like me to have any, like, male friends, and, and he would always make the excuse that in Japan it's just like this, like, he just spoke for all Japanese people, and, like, I should just get with the program. Or yeah, that's one thing that I notice about Japanese, is that they think that their opinion mm-hmm. represents everybody in Japan. Mm-hmm. We Japanese, we Japanese. Mm-hmm. And in Japanese, they say, watashi Nihonjin, right? Watashi tachi Nihonjin, blah, blah, blah. blah. And when you say that in English, it sounds weird, like, not you, you know. It's, it just kind of draws a line between people. Yeah. We Americans, I, unlike you sons of bitches, you know. So. 
Yeah, but um, I dated a, the second guy I dated. Uh, he was he was really nice, and actually, I was planning to go back to Japan to be with him, but right, yeah. Um, what ended up happening? It was it was actually both of us. That it, he ended up getting a job in Russia. He lives in Russia now. What? Yeah, he moved wow. to Moscow. Wow. Man. Uh, so he moved to Moscow and... It's like going to Colombia, man. That place is dangerous. Yeah, but apparently he likes it. He wanted some really? adventures, so... All right, so he went to Moscow. Um, Russian and women love Japanese guys. I was reading about this the other day. Really? Because he's had yeah. no luck yet. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Well, well he, said, he might be. He might. He, the thing about this guy is, like... Like, I don't know, like... Japanese. He's had some luck. He's just not telling you. He's keeping his windows open, his opportunity. Maybe, but I think that culturally what I notice is that, like, Japanese guys, like, for some reason, they, like, love the idea of sex more than actual sex, it seems. Like, it just what it, what seems what, like that's what it's like. Um, you know, that's why they have, like, so much more, like, porn and things like that are, like, so much more big than the actual, like, consummation. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, I, I mean, the, the yeah, the one thing is that like, uh, you know, my 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 Japanese ex, the non crazy one, he was like a super sweet guy and stuff. But but the one thing I have to say is like, on an emotional level, it was really hard because he was, you know, he did not say, you know, like I the most I got was, I like you. <laughs> In English. And, uh, yeah, and then he said like. Um, uh, he goes. I, he would never say I love you, but he said, "I think I love you as much as I probably love most people in my family." <laughs> I'm like, "Well, that's that's." I love nice. you like I love my mom. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's um. Weird. We, that's weird. Yeah, we we ended up like breaking up, but it was like it wasn't like a like a bad breakup like I had before, like the stalkerist crazy breakup of of yesteryear. Mm. I'll say that story right. next, but um, no. But then tell was, us about the new guy. Then this is a, this yeah. is the romantic part. Okay. Play. All right. All right. All right. This is this is good. Okay. Point. So so the the end of the story is that I I took the LSATs. I drove myself crazy studying for them, and in the end, my mom's like, "Hey, we're gonna go to Vegas on a trip. So family vacation. I hadn't seen my family in a while, so." We all went together, and all of a sudden, uh, go to, I'm not a clubber. In fact, even though, you know, I lived in Tokyo, I never went out, like, partying that much at night. But that one night I decided when I was in Vegas, you know what, there's a nightclub attached to the casino slash hotel I was staying at, which is the Lux, you know, the pyramid one. Uh, so let me go inside there and and check it out. I mean, and I also thought I'm staying at the hotel so I can if I get really drunk I could stumble back up to the room. How hard could it be? Right. And and also my stepdad was in the casino playing blackjack. So I'm like so if any weird guys come, you know, my stepdad will take take care of them. So uh I go into the casino. He'll take care of them, you know. Yeah, pretty much. Really? Exactly. <laughs> He would if you need, if need be, you know. Uh so I go into the casino. I mean, I go into this nightclub. And um, like I'm just kind of looking around, like I, I don't, I like I'm so like taken aback, like I'm like I just have never been to a nightclub in like like maybe like three or four years. So I was like, wow, it's so so odd. People just bumping and grinding, and I'm just kind of like watching and a little bit like nodding my head to the music, like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And um, first, this like what much is, older. What, what was what was that song? It sounded like the in, the uh, no. Sparkling <laughs> Banner or something. No, that, that, that's me. I, actually, I don't remember what was. Oh, I do remember the song that came up when when uh, my now boyfriend uh, started talking to me. Uh, it was. What was it? I don't I, I don't know what the name of it is. Was, I just came to say hello. You guys know that song? No. I don't know. Well, you guys are too old for that shit at this point. I, I work out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I'm standing there, and this like much much older guy. I mean, I'm not to say much older. I would say, like, could be my father's age, maybe even a little older. You mean like he my tries age? To, he, no, you're younger than my dad by a little bit. Oh, hold on, hold on, mm -hmm. hold on. How old's your boyfriend? He's the same age as me. Well, he's uh, six months older than me. Oh, so another guy. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the guy you eventually ended up with. So who's this other? Who's this old guy? Oh, this guy just uh, some random club guy. I don't know, but this is part of the story because okay. he's talking to me, but I'm like just trying to kind of ignore him. And I was like, uh -huh. I don't want to talk to this guy. I need to find someone else to talk to so I don't talk to this guy anymore, or else you know he won't let up. And then like I see what will be my future boyfriend, and he's, 
he's got like he, he's like white man dance. Uh, you white, know. White man, hey, white men have the best dances. It's a little known fact. <laughs> I can I can pretend to be white. Them? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely was funny, and he has like tons of. Let's rhythm, Victor. Let's rhythm. <laughs> so he comes up to me and he's like, hey. And I'm like, hey. And he's like, you want a drink? And I'm like, you know what, sure. And so I go with him. He grabs me by the hand. And I think we're going to the bar. Little do I know, him and his fucking group of cronies that he's hanging out with got a table. They have their own little private table, which I don't know how it is in a lot of places. But in the States, those tables at nightclubs are ridiculously expensive. Right, right, right. No, it's just like 300. Huh? 300. It was 300? Three hundred dollars. What's that? For I'm you guys? Per person. per person, exactly. And there was like how many people well. there? Enough. The point is, it was enough. What? Three hundred dollars per person? Yes, for the table. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's not a really nice table. So, so you have, you have to sit on his lap, right? Because yeah. you didn't have three hundred so, bucks, right? So, so wait. Three hundred and got thrown out after half an hour. Yeah, oh, yeah. There was another one you went into that you got thrown out of because you decided to jump inside a jacuzzi when you shouldn't have. <laughs> it's true, man. Uh, As you don't understand, this is cultural. <laughs> you put a yeah. jacuzzi in front of a German person. What are you supposed to do? Jump in. So, of course. so we we end up yeah we end up talking to each other and um and no. but he he's making me a drink and I admit that like my 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 instincts are first like I gotta watch this guy he's not throwing roofies in my drink. I know. I'm like, what's going on here? And he's just like, like talking to me, but he's a little bit slurred and drunk. And but the music's really loud. But we're dancing, and then it was like, like I was also not used to just dancing and having my butt grab like the whole night. But he was just like going for it. He was like, yeah, let's just go for it, you know. And I was like, well, fuck it, it's Vegas, right? <laughs> what happens in Vegas? Yeah, that's what everybody says. That was the big joke. Right. So at, at the I end, the nightclub closed. <laughs> the, the nightclub closes, and we end up at the bar. There's a bar like in the casino, so we end up at the bar. And we end up what talking. What time is it that a bar nightclub in Vegas closes? Like five a.m. It was like three thirty or four. In the afternoon. It was, it was like <laughs> Wednesday though. It was like a Wednesday. It wasn't even like. <laughs> yeah. So um, we we ended up uh, having drinks at the bar, and then he sobers up, and we started talking, and you know, like you know, it was a good conversation. We were just talking about what he does for a living. He lied and told me he owned a chocolate factory. That son of a bitch. Ah. I was so hoping that that was the true, but Willy Wonka that would have been pretty cool. That's uh, <laughs> many times yeah, I often pretend. I often pretend. <laughs> I've never thought but about using that line. That's that's a weird one. Right? I have a small but I army of short workers. Who <laughs> but I, I actually believed it at first because I thought, like, well, chocolate factory, maybe it's like a little chocolate factory. That makes sense, right? Like, he's German. I mean, like, because in Japan, I definitely knew people who own, like, their own candy shops and stuff. Like, you know, you'd meet them. You know, so I, I thought maybe it was just a small one. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Is German, is German chocolate famous or something? Yeah, it is. Yeah, but I think have you not seen the Simpsons episode like where they, the oh, nuclear power plant right. gets taken over by the German government? The land of chocolate. This is the land of chocolate. The fat, the fat, the fat German kid. That's right. Oh, yeah, that was him too. Uter, yeah. yeah. But, um, was a good episode. but yeah. But we end up, um, yeah, we end up, uh, I, end, I didn't even find out, oh, yeah, yeah, this is a funny story. This is how I get cities on. We, uh, we end up uh, exchanging phone numbers. Oh, yeah, he wanted me to go back with him, like, to his hotel room. But I was like, ah, oh, I can't do that. Um, he had chocolate waiting. I mean, how could you refuse? Yeah, but then I was like, no, 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 here, here's my phone number. Uh, and he's like, no, that's a lie. You know, women always say that. And I was like, I swear, I'll meet up with you tomorrow. And I had planned to because my family was meeting up with another relative who was not related to me, you know, because I'm the mm. step half-child. Right, right, right. So... So they were meeting with another relative that I had no interest in meeting, and so I had the day free anyway. So me and him ended up meeting for, like, lunch, and we ended up only planning to meet for lunch, but we spent the entire day together, I mean, up until, like, maybe, like, 3 in the morning of just wow. hanging out and talking, and it was like, you know, like, I hadn't talked like that to someone in, like, a long time. Because you were so, living in Japan. Yeah, uh, yeah, that could have been it. <laughs> and... uh you know, I I definitely did make friends in Japan with Japanese people and even my ex boyfriend, but it's a lot harder just to like, you know, communicate mm -hmm. on that same level. Also, his English is like like 
like what Japanese people wish their English was like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's really, it's not to say that in a mean way. I'm just saying, like, when I went to Germany, and you see, like, they always say, oh, man, German people always tell me, yeah, we can't speak English. I'm like, what are you talking about? Know, All you got is go, and they speak English. This is yes. a lie. You, you oh, English is terrible. Like, we apologize in, a, in advance for this terrible English you're about to hear coming out of our mouths. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, exactly. Yeah. So uh, we ended up, oh yeah, I had to leave. I was leaving in San Francisco the next day, and he wanted me to stay with him, and I was like, yeah, I, normally I would have, but my, I was traveling with my mom, and my mom would have freaked out. She would have right. so You're staying with some random guy you just met in Vegas? So I ended up going to San Francisco. Well, hold on, we, hold we, on. We gave each other the Facebook thing. Yeah. You're, you're, you're Italian originally? You're Italian, right? I, I'm, Cu I'm Cuban, <laughs> Colombian, <laughs> Italian. Italian. My last oh, name is yeah. Italian. <laughs> I don't know, we have... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, nothing yeah. ethnically against Germans or... Okay. No. I mean, my, my, my grandfather fought in World War II, so... Could have could have shot him. There's, there's, there are Americans who won't even, like, they won't even uh, ride in Mitsubishi now because of the war. That's so retarded. Yeah. So... Anyway, yeah. so no, nothing in your family about that. So then, no. how'd you get to Germany? Oh. How'd you get to England? Okay, so here, there's more to the story. So he and the Facebook day, right? I, I said, he didn't want me to leave, and he's like, oh, I'll never see you again. Hey, you two, keep it down. <laughs> um, we, we ended up uh, switching Facebook information, and I sent him, like, oh, he adds me on Facebook, so I say, hey, I had a great time, thanks. And, and, but he doesn't reply, and I'm like, well, maybe he just had his fun, and that was that. Bastard. But then... Yeah, that son of a bitch. But then I end up back in Miami, and all of a sudden we start talking on Facebook. Hey, how are you? And he, he was playing a tournament. He's going back to play WSOP, the World Series of Poker. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's a professional poker player. That was his real job. And by the way, it is a real job for all you assholes who think it's not. Hey, I would love to be able to have that job. <laughs> um, so... He he's like in the tournament still, and I'm talking to him a little bit on Facebook, and then I'm like, oh, I have me on Skype, so we Skype with each other, and we start talking, and then I my plot to convince him to come to Miami like begins, because I'm like, oh come on, you're here anyway. Before you go back to England, just you know, it's like a three-hour flight. Just just go to Miami. How hard is it? Yeah, come on. You know. So he makes it to, he, I end up, I, I win, I win this uh, thing because eventually he flies out. He actually changed his flight to go to Miami. Uh, so he delays his flight back to England, changes it, and flies to Miami. And um, I go to pick him up from the airport, and I thought to myself, man, I'm just picking up this guy. I don't even know him that well. And then he thought when I came to pick him up, you know what? I barely knew you. How did I know you were even going to pick me up at the airport? I'm like, yeah, good point. So um, we ended up renting a, ho a, a hotel in Miami Beach and hanging out, but no funny business because I'm a nice girl. <laughs> of course. <laughs> You're a nice Catholic girl. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but you, you'd be surprised. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but the funny thing is we're driving, right? And then he goes, oh, I have a confession to tell you. And I'm like, what? And he's like, I don't really have a chocolate factory. <laughs> and I go, well, I have a confession to ha I have to tell you, too. I'm not a I kind of have a boyfriend in Japan because oh. <laughs> I was still kind. We were still kind of dating. It was towards oh, the real right. end. Like we we were we were talking like very scarcely, so it wasn't like anything like big. So I go. Uh, I it we spend escalate the from there. I mean, actually, no. I have <laughs> two more confessions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it didn't get any worse. Yeah. Yeah. But but we were we were we spent the week together. We also went to Disney World and stuff because I was like, you know, fuck it, I want to go and hang out. Let's let's do some, you right. want to do some Florida stuff. Gotta, let's do some you gotta Florida take stuff. Him, you gotta take him. You gotta take him around. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he he was a nice guy about it. So, so people I was, are I was asking. Mm -hmm. I, hate, I hate to go backwards in this conversation, but people are asking about the cultural differences between, uh, well, with Japanese guys. What's, what, what, what was the Everybody biggest difference? Like well, I would say the biggest cultural difference, especially since I'm, I'm like Hispanic, is that you don't get the I love you so easily. Like Hispanic men, they're, they're known as being very passionate and like, mm. you know, emotional. Whereas like Japanese guys are the absolute opposite of that. Um, Where do Germans fit on the continuum? I would say somewhere in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but I would say like I can't even like I almost feel bad saying well, that. I get the impression that Germans are very cold as well. 
so. They're not. Wow, they're totally work. not. <laughs> no, 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 no. I thought that at first, but then I, I went to Germany. I've known so many German people that it's totally not like that. Oh, there are some differences, but um, like I also feel bad just kind of saying like, how's it like to date Japanese guys? Because I dated like three and a couple, and I really, I can't really say like, oh, it's like this or like that, because I dated two, and they were the exact opposite of each other. Like one was always aggressive and really upset and super jealous, and the other guy was like really not and like. One of them hit you, didn't they? Yeah, Locked that you or was. That, he pushed me up against the bed, and then he jumped on top of me. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was that was the crazy one. That was a that, that, there's a YouTube video. Like if you watch my YouTube yeah. video, if anyone goes to my channel and sees um, uh, why I left Japan, it, it's like it's a long video, but it says the entire story of what ended up happening. Yeah. Yeah, I think I saw. It. I yeah, know how but I know that story, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I also t I told you when it happened because we talked. Because well, remember, I, I I had yes because I had made the YouTube video for you. Remember, I put a YouTube uh, video on your channel about dating Japanese guys, and he was all nutty yeah. about it. Yeah, I remember. I remember, he wanted me to take it down. Yeah, he because he appears in it for like one second. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he was a fucking crazy guy. Mm. I will broadcast it to the world. <laughs> see, the thing about the thing about dating people from other cultures, though, in the end, it all break, it all comes down to to their personality. All that all that other cultural stuff is not really that important. Yeah, I think eventually end, it comes out. Yeah, he's a nut, and he could have been American as well. I mean, there's there's tons of American nuts as well. Exactly, and like the second guy I dated, like yeah, I would say the only thing was that he was a little less emotional. But I've known plenty of Japanese guys who were emotional. I think it was just his personality. Mm. But I, I have no regrets about the second guy I dated. Like like when we ended up breaking up because because this is how I ended up in England. I mm. basically uh, was invited to go to England and said, oh, you know, by this German guy, hey, you want to come to England? And I knew right there and then, like I could, I'm either gonna break up with my boyfriend right now or not go to England. There's not gonna be mm. one or the other. Yeah, so, like, we had a conversation, like, me and my boyfriend at the time, the Japanese guy, and, you know, we we talked about it, like, we laid everything, all the cards out, like, what are we doing right now, and he's like, well, I can't tell you not to go, because I'm gonna, I want to go to Russia, and, you know, this is what I want to do, and I also want to go to law school, and so we had a lot to, we, we were basically going in different directions as it was, and so... You know, I, I, it was sad because he was a nice guy, and, and to this day, I, and we, we're still friends. We still talk and stuff once in a while. Um, but you know, we both came to like the decision that it's not going to work, and that was that. But long distance, uh, yeah, it's 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 often a practical thing. It's one thing like I, I did a long distance thing for over a year when I was like 22. With who? 23. With who? With what? What, <laughs> what, what kind of woman? Or man, yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> sheep. 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 You're from sheep. New Zealand. It was a sheep. Very, very attractive sheep. Uh, it was not <laughs> meant to be. I was in Japan eating sushi and not not anywhere near any other sheep. So, um, I don't know, I, yeah, I, 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 I think if I was in a situation like that now, where I was looking seriously at like not being sure when you're coming back for at least six or seven months, mm. I'd be a little bit more pragmatic about it now. When you're young, I guess you always think. Yeah, I think so. Love will overcome all obstacles. It does. It, it, it lies. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think that was one thing I learned too, because you know they, that yeah. was my experience too. Uh, you know, we tried to, and and yeah, so uh, I ended up, and thus I got a ticket to England, and I was only supposed to go for one month, and I never left. So here I am. Really? Hey, what's the visa okay. situation for you? Uh, I turned in my application, and well, they can't deport me. <laughs> no, no, what is it, like three months, what, six months? Oh, well, six or months, actually. It's, it's really? six months, uh, but the deal is, actually, I got stopped at the border. It was uh, one of the times I left and came back, and they held me for, like, five hours. It was a pain in the ass because this bitch at the immigration, like, border, she just was, like, <laughs> insisting that I was just going to stay in England and live my life as, like, an illegal immigrant and mooching off their welfare system. You should have said, I'm not Mexican! <laughs> I should have said that, but I was like, "What the fuck?" I got, I get it. The U.S. had just gotten downgraded, you, you know, downgraded know, know. for their credit. But I'm like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Like, are you serious?" <laughs> and um, yeah, always travel with your credit cards, children. This is like a, something I learned the hard way. You should always carry cash with you because if you don't, they can give you all kinds of shit for it. Yeah. And don't let your boyfriend carry his, your wallet if he's going into the other line. <laughs> oh right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so now so, I'm living here. Yeah. 
But um, the school that screwed you over, there's nothing you can do. You're basically... I, oh, I'm sure that if I wanted to, like, I, I would have to go there to do it. Like, I would have to, like, file a complaint with, like, you know, the, the what is the, the war, what do they call the bureau, you know, the, the bureau the that handles, show? basically. I, I think the, the, the one the that they show. It's the one, the, the it's the, bureau, the, work, the workers bureau, basically, yeah. 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 I'd have to go and, and file, file a complaint with them, and I don't know, there probably is a statute of limitations that I would have passed already. Hmm. Um, um, it's just a pain in the ass, but you still can talk Yeah, I mean, that's exactly basically what I concluded. I concluded it was a pain in the ass, and in the end, it was about maybe the equivalent about two thousand five hundred dollars that was screwed out of, maybe more. But I was like, the flight is going to cost me like oh right. more than half of that. So uh, you should. Yeah, um, what you should I would do, only do it just to like to send them one email. Send them as a courtesy. Say I'm going to make a video once a week warning people about your school, and you will never find another English teacher. I was planning on doing that. I really was, and I'll tell you the reason why I didn't do it. I really will. This is the honest to God reason. Is that I wanted? I I was planning on going back to Japan, and I I really I like my co my the coworkers who stayed. Uh, who I'm still friends with, I'm still fa on Facebook terms with. Uh, I also didn't want to put them in an awkward situation, and it might be that they would be in an awkward situation. Yeah. And, um, you know, if they had to pick sides, basically. And on top of that, like, I really, really, really... As much as I hated the end of that, the school, the way they, they treated me at the end, like, I, I almost felt like, you know what? I have to kind of analyze that. I, the whole experience as a whole was good. The end mm. fucking sucked, the fact that they did that. And, like, I really loved my students, and I almost didn't want the idea of me not being able to go back to visit and say hi to my students. It seemed, like, so it's almost not worth it. Like, I was, like, mm. like, I even, like, wanted to send candies. Like, I knew, even the teachers who, like, got, like, screwed over, like, sent packages, like, to the school. Like, hey, how are you guys? Can you pass these candies out to my old students? You know, and I, I, I still didn't want to be in such a bad, bad water, basically. Like, yeah. about it. So that's basically why... <laughs> so, that's, I don't that's, know. that's good that you don't hold a grudge about that, but um, yeah, and I, I'm I've got a rich man, so I don't need that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it? Keeps winning those book again. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like other war, other fo other foreigners should be warned about that. I, I definitely would. I would be willing to do more of a blog about it rather mm. than like like of the entire experience. Like, so when, you know, so and then when people do a search for it, they'll find it. Yeah. Like, oh well, maybe I don't want to work. There. Yeah, I, I definitely is. I definitely think that there's that that in it. I would say that that definitely sucks. But I don't know. In in other ways, the school was slightly nicer than like I'll give you like the good and the bad of all three schools. Basically, the first school I worked for, um, they constantly screwed you out of money like all the time. Like they would never pay you for the day off. So they always wanted you to come in, and and like the contract was written in a very fucked up way. You know. Like, mm. And no matter what, you're wrong. You know, one of those kind of contracts. Right. Um, I'm always and, right, and if number two, I'm always right. And I found in that school that, like, I, I mean, this might be something. I mean, I don't know. You guys have worked with a lot more Japanese people than I did, but the one thing I really didn't like about what I worked at a lot of schools is that the higher ups, especially the management. I mean, this could be not just a Japanese thing, but a management thing. They will never take responsibility because you can't be mistaken because being mistaken is such a horrible thing. Mm. So it's so much easier to blame the gaijin because you're supposed to. You're okay with having mistakes and saying you're sorry. And so, like, things that would never should have never been blamed on me and should have definitely been blamed on management and things that I would even say that, like, hey, why did you guys take care of this? They'd be like, well, this is your fault, you know, that you should have done. Like, I'm like, what? I, you just hired me. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Mm. And but I found that a lot of the management that was a big problem in pro in all three schools they they would never take responsibility for if anything went wrong. That's what that jet article was that I I, uh, I oh yeah about I, that I read the, I read that jet article that was a crazy yeah, article yeah, that reminded long. me of it. yeah but. yeah I think did you find that um did you feel like you were friends with them, but in the end, realize that they kind of just saw you as an employee? Well, I think that they tried to, at first, make it, they were, they were definitely a lot more friendly than the other three schools, because it was a family who owned the school. It was like mom, dad, and two daughters who were like, you know, the owners. 
And they were also a Christian school, and man, did they milk that I'm a Christian thing. It was like a little over the top, I thought. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, but... Actually, yeah. Uh, it, it, was, it was always hard. Like, I never wanted to add them on Facebook as a friend. Like, the man... I would add my coworkers, just not the management. It was just something I just couldn't do. Like, even as myself, I would try to be friendly, but it, there was always a point where I was like... I also was, like, afraid of it, because I, I never wanted to get close with anyone who was, like, you know, a boss or something like that. I didn't want them to know that much about me. Mm -hmm. There's actually, uh, at my coworkers, there's two people who have, low, I've actually got two Catholic Japanese coworkers and they send their wow. kids to Catholic school. Wow. And apparently, That's yeah, rare. if you're actually Catholic, your kids like get half price, yeah, they, they get like a, a big discount on the fees. Oh, really? I, I, I um. tend to ask, like, do Protestants get like half the discount? <laughs> like, yeah, it uh, like that, yeah. How can they tell? What do you have to do, bring the baptism paper? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't if, you're, if you're Jewish, you have to drop your pants. Yeah. <laughs> it's a check. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're, we're running into an hour now, so we better uh, wrap this baby up. But um, mm -hmm. for everyone who does not know, this is Caffeine Jedi. Caffeine Jedi, spell your name on again, C-A-F-F-I-N-E. Yeah, C-A-F-F-I-N-E. J-E-D-I. And That's the fucked right. thing is, if you search me on YouTube, they always say, did you mean da 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 something completely different? I'm like, no, you fuckers, that's right. Why do you always do that? <laughs> as, as you can tell, uh, Catfine Jedi is, is a bit shy about expressing <laughs> herself. <laughs> if you guys don't know her, <laughs> if you guys don't know her, check out her channel. She's got a whole bunch of old, older videos that when she was in Japan that are still... Uh, definitely worth uh, viewing, and she's one of the few vloggers that will easily say fuck without any qualms. That, why not? <laughs> I don't see a problem. Yeah, why I'm not? over the age of 18. That's true. I, did, I never said it in school. Like, when I was teaching, I was always like, oh, gosh, darn you kids. Gosh. Oh, I would. That was the one thing that every, everybody always asked me was like, oh, how could you be a teacher? I'm like, man, you, you can. You can hold it. I know. Hold People it. think that just because you say something in one on, on a video, you, you, you must be a terrible person, and you can't possibly be a teacher. I get, I get that shit all the time. Yeah. yeah. I was ready to say either flip or fudge. I say, um, oh my goodness, and I was like, oh, that was the one thing I was like, oh. The old, I think the worst thing I've ever said to my students is that one time I was like, you drive me crazy today. <laughs> ah, and then they learned that. And uh, and they would say it to each other, you're driving me crazy. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I better not say that anymore. <laughs> There's <laughs> a like, question here. Comes out. All right, go ahead. There's a question. Do you guys feel like English teachers are exploited in general in Japan? Yes and no. I think that you get paid yeah. more. You get paid more than the Japanese people, and I got more vacation yeah. days too, so I can't yeah. even say that. Yeah, yeah, you do. You get paid more uh, for having. Not, not really. Not really. I don't think you get exploited any more than the regular workers. I think they expl if they, they usually are equal opportunity exploiters. <laughs> All bosses try to exploit their employees as much as possible, right? Yes, I think so. I I think that like I, I've known. Um, I remember though in my first school, like my middle, the middle school, the one I worked in in Tokyo, they used to hire tons of Philippine people to work there because they could pay them a lot cheaper. Yeah, Filipinos are very ah, good. and that's actually something with the online um, English teaching as well. There's a lot yes. of uh, Philippine online. They charge 500 yen an hour, man. That's yeah. ridiculous. I'm undercutting nobody everybody. Can, I know nobody can compete with that, man, they, and their they, English they, is good. They're coming close yeah. to competing with New Zealanders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, actually, I'm a, my, my best friend, she's a Filipina girl. She married a Japanese guy, and she, she has a baby now. And oh. um, she, she, I thought, she, she told me she was Filipina, but I thought, yeah, your parents are from the Philippines, right? Where are you from? California? Uh, you know, what part of the States are you from? Because her English was like my English. It was spot on perfect. So. Wow. Yeah. Hey, someone wants to know where you live in England. Do you feel comfortable letting that information out? Yes, I live in Brighton. It is like Brighton. the San Francisco Brighton. of England. <laughs> yeah. But here's Not the very uh, seagulls in the background. People were asking, were those seagulls? And I'm, they, they, they yeah, they sure seagulls. fucking are. It's ridiculous. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, live, actually, it, yeah. I live next to the, I live in the coast uh, by the English Channel, basically. Oh. oh, I thought that was your washing machine. Oh, there was that, and then there were seagulls. I have the window open. It was the Germans, the seagulls, and the washing machine. It's a combination. It's, it, it, I have I have one German and one Russian German. Let's see right German. now. 
Yeah, he's like, he's a cool um, guy. Um, Hiko, I got a question for you. Um, yeah. You're not a permanent resident, right? No, although I, I've been meaning to What, you're not? That. Jesus, you've been around there forever, haven't you? I, yeah, I no, am not either, but I applied uh, three or four or five months ago. So it apparently takes about nine months for the paperwork to go through, so I, I may be a permanent resident in a few months, but I'm not yeah. a permanent resident. Oh, and I have no interest in becoming a citizen. People always say, do you want to be a Japanese citizen? I have no interest. I'm, going to, I'm an American. I'm always going to be an American. Um, those are all the questions that you know. Yeah. I'm gonna get my English passport when I the second they let me. <laughs> it just makes it easier in my life. I wanna, yeah. of course, I'm gonna travel through the EU without like any problem. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. So, um, Darth J F says that in Finland we only say I love you when we're drunk. What about Germans? No, he said I love you. Not well for you, sober the first time he said it. You're and he sober? says it all the time, so. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. It was very romantic. It was actually in Miami, but I thought he was bullshitting me because I had only known him for a couple of days. And he was like, I love you. I've never said that to anyone in my life. And then I'm I was like, sure. Do Spanish people say that a lot? Te amo? What do we say? I don't know. They, they say mi, mi amor. They say your mi you know, amor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mi amor, mi amor. yeah. Te quiero. But I don't remember my parents really like being lovey-dovey, but I'm pretty sure they're really in love with each other. Didn't, so. didn't you say that your parents called each other chulos? <laughs> Did they? <laughs> cholo. 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 Yeah. I think that's the way black people talk to each other, like nigga, you know? But, <laughs> but in a more, yeah, gangster parents, but, but in the Peruvian way. Anyway. I don't think we have the Cuban people say that Well, listen, uh, everyone, again, this is Cat Fine Jedi. We better wrap this baby up. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Hey, Cap, hey, what time is it there, by the way? Before it is 3.30 p.m. Oh, I thought it was supposed to be like 6 a.m. for you. I thought it was, but apparently the time was different. I thought you said, what time is it over there? It's almost midnight. 11.30, 11.30, 30, 11.40 almost. Wow, well, shows right, how fucking cool. wrong I was about that calculation. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, you're only going to be a lawyer, not a mathematician, so no worries. Uh, and next exactly. week, Hiko Simon, who's on next week? <laughs> if he's still talking to us, B O K U N K. He's quite that. angry this evening, apparently. He, he, he's angry, angry now. I want him to stay angry. If I'm, I'm going to keep taunting him through the week just to keep him in a good angry mood. Yeah, we'll get him on angry. <laughs> but, um, it should and be a fun also, show. Um, uh, Starlet Shea has been back in touch with, touch ah, with us. Ah, I thought she was on next week. Maybe she was. <laughs> I think I she was on next week. Okay, it makes more sense because she can do it in Japanese and we'll probably do a Japanese show next week. But uh, right. It's all up in the air anyway, but uh, it, it'll be in the next two weeks. Will be One will be Starlet Shea and one will be BLK UNK and we'll figure it out. But, uh, all right, yeah, all right good, I got three new subscribers up. already. Woo. Yeah, you guys, subscribe to Cat Find Jedi. She's cool. And she will not mince words, and that's what you want. Mm, she's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Cool. All right, see ya. Until next time, see, see you guys. See you. Did I just press this exit button? <laughs> <laughs>